Hello and welcome. Remember this one? PT element we talked about last time. Yeah? PT element was a combination of a P and a D element. Yeah? History. We are talking about something else. We are talking about a combination of a P and not a D. Zit, go away. An I element. So we are talking about a P I element. Okay, this is the topic of this video. P I element. And similar, very similar to the PD element, it consists of two parts. Yeah? And both parts are summarized. Okay? So there is the P part. There is the I part, and of course there is the input, which will reach both. Okay. So we have here plus and plus. This here is XO from S, and this here is XI from S. The transfer function of a P element we had already several times, Kp, just a factor. The transfer function of an I element, please remember Ki divided by S or 1 divided by STI, Ti is 1 divided by Ki. Okay. So Ki divided by S or 1 divided by STI. So what is the total transfer function G from S? It's GP from S plus GI from S. So this is KP plus 1 divided by STI. Okay. This is one standard representation. Yeah. But we can even do the following. We can say Kp 1 plus, and now if I want to have this inside the bracket, I also have this Kp. And this is also constant. Yeah. And I can substitute this with another name, 1 plus 1 divided by STN. Yeah? And this TN is KP multiplied by TI. Or KP divided by KI. Yeah? Because this is what TI is. This is more common. This is the second representation. This is the first representation, this is the second representation. What does it mean for a frequency response? G for G for J omega is Kp uh, 1 plus 1 divided by J omega Tn. This is nothing else than Kp 1 minus J 1 divided by omega Tn. Okay, this J, just get it up. Now let's think about what it means. This is the imaginary axis. This is the real axis. Here we do have some this Kp. So this is Kp. And we multiply this with here is 1. And here minus. And here we have 1 divided by omega Tn. 
this is the second part. And the multiplication of both will be our g from j omega. Okay? So it will basically this multiplied by this and the angle will be the same as the green arrow. Okay, so let's think about what would it mean for omega equals zero. Yeah? The absolute value from j zero. Yeah? What does it mean? This will remain constant. This here will grow to infinity. Yeah? Constant multiplied by infinity is, of course, infinity. Yeah? And the argument is zero plus this angle minus 90 minus 90 degree okay because this is getting longer 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 so this means we are getting to minus 90 degree and omega infinity hmm. what does it mean this means this will get zero here one divided by unlimited infinity is zero. So this is one, one multiplied by kp. This means the absolute value is nothing else than kp. And the argument is zero because we will just point on the real axis. Okay? So this is the math. This is the math. Let's think about the transfer functions or the step response and so on. Let's use this sheet again here. Yeah. Let's write pi element. Let's summarize what a pi element is. I will use this representation. Yeah. So, gs equals, or I'll use kp plus 1 divided by sti, okay, equals kp 1 plus 1 divided by sdn, okay, g from j omega equals kp 1 plus 1 divided by j omega tn, of course, the absolute value is arcus tangens form this divided by this, yeah, or, no, 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 this is the it's not the absolute value, this is the argument, of course. Arcus tangens uh, of minus 1 divided by omega tn. Yeah? And now the absolute value is k multiplied by square root 1 plus 1 divided by omega tn squared. Okay. Good. Let's see the jump response. Let's have a look on the jump response. Let's think about the jump response of an p element. The p element, we said it's zero. Here we jump to kp. In my case here, I jump to two, so kp is two. Let's think about the response of An I element, it will simply grow. Yeah? And here we have this Ti. And Ti in my case is 10. Okay. How will the sum look like? Here we stay at 0, of course. Here we're going to jump to Kp, yeah? and then we start to grow. Here we would again see, here we have 1, 
Yeah? We have one bigger, yeah? and we have again this Ti. But this is not that good to measure. Look at this. This here. We grow to 1 in 10 seconds. We grow to Kp in Kp multiplied by Ti yeah, in Kp factor Kp time. Yeah, this takes Ti until we reach 1. So how much time it takes to reach Kp? Kp multiplied by Ti. And this is Tn. Ah, suddenly this makes sense. Yeah? I can see Tn here also. In German it's the so-called Nachstellzeit. Yeah? Tn. So this is the jump response. And we do see again this feature at high frequency, unlimited frequency. We have Kp. This is what we have here. Yeah? And at zero frequency, so if the frequency is getting lower, we have unlimited. This will grow and grow and grow into eternity. Okay? Step response. Now, let's have a look on the frequency response. Let's again think about the P element. The P element was just here Kp. Here we are at Kp. And here we are at zero. This was the P element. And now the I element. Okay. The I element. Tn in this case is. 20, 1 divided by 20 is 0 0.02, so we are here. Yeah. Ti, ah, Ti is 10, sorry, Ti is 10, yeah. so we are here. At 1 tenth. Yeah. And This is 1 divided by Ti, this frequency, we called it omega d. And we are just dropping. The higher the frequency, the lower the absolute value. Okay? The higher the frequency, the lower the absolute value. 10 times the frequency, only a tenth. And here, we are at minus 90 degree all the time. And similar to the PD element, we can see here is a big number plus a small number. So we will stick at this big number. Then we will start to To notice that there are two different parts yeah? and then we will reach it will almost look like the p element because the i element is just adding in this case 0 0.001 so we have not two we have 2.0001 so doesn't really matter yeah? so at low frequencies it looks like an i element at high frequencies it looks like a p element which here at this band which frequency do we have yeah. here we have one divided by ti yeah. i want to get to kp here we have one i want to get to kp so the frequency must be the factor kp lower so this new frequency here yeah, this omega g is omega d divided by kp, and this is 1 divided by ti kp, 
and this is 1 divided by Tn. Here we have again the Tn. The Tn is this band. Okay. Which angle do we have got? If omega is 1 divided by Tn, it's 1 divided by 1, 1 plus 1, Wurzel 2, yeah, k, but here we have again this, this uh, uh, root of, of uh, square root of 2 factor between, it comes out here, yeah, because 1 divided by omega tn, and now this omega is 1 divided by tn, it's 1, 1 divided by tn, multiplied by tn is zack zack 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, zack. Yeah? And here arcos tangens minus 1, arcos tangens of minus 1 is minus 45 degree. Ta -ta. And suddenly it looks very familiar. Here we are an I element, yeah? so we are at minus 90 degrees somewhere. Yeah? Here we are moving up, and here we are getting close to a p element close to zero degree. Okay. Both times. Here we are at Kb, at high frequencies we are at Kb. This is what we already know. Yeah? At high frequencies we have zero degree. This is what we already know. This was the mathematical approach. This was the graphic approach, let's call it, yeah, to simply add two elements, PI element, very important element, yeah, often used as, as controller, PI element. Yeah, next time we said, remember, this PT element was very, very similar to this PI element, but I said this D element is somewhat artificial because if we are looking at the step response response of the of the uh, PD element, there was also this jump, yeah? and we said this D element has a brother, yeah? which can be seen in real, and it's this DT1 element. So we're not then producing a PT element, we're producing a PTT1 element. And see what this is about. This will be then in next video. For this video, PI element, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.